Well, hello and welcome to our grade one to three class for our online content at North Park Community Church. And this is already the first weekend in June. Can you believe it? It's so exciting to think of school being done pretty soon and with summer coming. And I wonder if you are starting to be excited for some of the things that you might get to do this summer. I know I am. Well, this whole month long, we are starting in a brand new theme called Press Play. Have you ever pressed play on something? Maybe it was on the TV so that you could watch something. Or maybe it was on mom or dad's phone so that you could listen to some music. There's lots of different ways that we press play in our lives and get going. But you know, sometimes things don't work out the way that we think that they should. And so sometimes we can feel maybe a little nervous when we press play. That's why this month we're talking about a special word. This word is the word confidence. And confidence means learning to see yourself the way that God sees you. Isn't that neat? Confidence comes from learning to see ourselves the way that God sees us. So that we can have confidence when we press play, no matter what it is that we're going to do. Here's a couple examples for you. Okay, example number one, basketball. I love basketball and I've got a, I've got a pretty good shot. Watch this. There's one. There's two. But you know what? Sometimes, even though I'm confident in basketball, this can happen. Oh, man. Oh, see, sometimes I miss, but that's okay. It's part of playing basketball. But I can still be confident even when I miss. Okay, the second thing that I think I'm really good at, I've got lots of confidence in, is in eating. I like bananas. Do you like bananas? I can peel a banana. I can eat the banana. Mmm, man, that's so good. I can eat, no problem. But you know what even sometimes happens in eating? I can, what? Oh man, oh man. Sometimes things don't go the way that I had planned, but that's okay. I can still have confidence even when things don't go perfectly. All right, example number three of something that I am confident in. I'm confident in my ability to walk. I think I can do that pretty good. Can you? I'll bet. Let me demonstrate. Let me show you. Did you notice that? That was my legs moving by and walking really well. But do you know what sometimes happens? This happens. Oh. Sometimes I fall down, but that's okay. I can still have confidence that I can walk. So where does my confidence come from? Well, today's Bible story is all about learning where our confidence comes from. Because each and every day we press play on a lot of things. And sometimes we do really well. And sometimes maybe we don't do so well. But we can still have confidence if we're learning to see ourselves the way that God sees us. Now, just before we jump into today's story, I want to play a little game with you. Are you ready? I am going to say a word or an activity, and I want you to say whether we do it during the day or at night. And I want you to do it with an action, okay? If you do this activity during the day, go like this, like the sun is shining all around you, okay? Or if this is something that you do at night, I want you to do this. Pretend like you're sleeping. 
Okay, are you ready? So if it's in the daytime, if it's at nighttime, okay, I think we got it. We can do this. Here we go. First activity, putting on your pajamas. That's right. Well, for me, I put my pajamas on at night. What about going to school? <laughs> That's right. We go to school during the day. And even right now, we're going to school online. What about eating our lunch? Oh, I love lunch. That's right. We eat lunch during the day. If we were to eat it in the middle of the night, that wouldn't be lunch. It would be a midnight snack. What about using a flashlight? I love using a flashlight when we go camping. That's right. We do it at nighttime because that's when flashlights need to be used. What about playing baseball? Yeah, I play baseball during the day. Now, I suppose you could play at night if you played out in a field where they had lots of big lights. But normally, we play baseball and the other kinds of sports during the day. What about wearing sunglasses? <laughs> That's right. We do it during the day because that helps our eyes not to be feel so bright, right? It would be kind of silly to wear sunglasses at night. All right, I got one more. What about watching fireworks? Have you ever gotten to stay up and see fireworks? Ah, uh, that's right. You can't go to sleep too early. You need the night sky to be dark in order for you to go out and see fireworks. Well, today's story happens during the night. It's a special story about a man who came to see Jesus at night to learn more about God and his amazing love. So I hope you enjoy this week's story and we'll also before that jump right into our song which is called Press Play which is a super fun high energy song so we get ready to dance and then after the song and after the Bible story I will see you again right afterwards. My check. One, two, one, two. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah. Press play. Oh. Say, it's time to press play. 
Clap your hands like this. Have confidence to get in the mix. Clap your hands like this. Have confidence to get in the mix. Now clap your hands like this. Like this. Have confidence to get in the mix. Now clap your hands like this. Like this. Everybody get in the mix. Get in the mix. We're not stopping. Get in the mix. What's up, everybody? It's me, Graham. How do you like my smolder? I'm smoldering because in my line of work, you've got to have confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. I don't know how you see yourself, but I see myself as a performer. You should hear me sing. I sing everywhere, in the shower, in my car, alone in my room, everywhere except in front of other people. That's where I draw the line. I, when I'm alone, I'm like the most confident singer on the planet. But when other people are involved, I freeze up. And it's not just when I'm singing, it's when I'm playing an instrument. Or when I'm playing baseball. I got it. I got it. You get it. Or anytime someone asks me a question and I'm not sure of the answer. Why is the sky blue? Oh, uh, well, there's a very, very good reason. The, uh, the p p part particles in the, um, uh, uh, the, uh, basically, anytime people are watching, I lose my confidence. I start to doubt myself. I forget to see myself the way God sees me. If that's something that happens to you, you're gonna wanna stick around for today's story. It should be pretty cool. I can't see anything in these. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. As Jesus began to travel and teach and perform miracles, people started asking, Who is this man? One of these people was a man named Nicodemus. He had been born a Jew. Well, yes, we are God's chosen people. Not only that, but Nicodemus was also a Pharisee, an important religious leader, and he was a member of the Sanhedrin, which was the Jewish high court. After careful consideration, I find that you have disobeyed God's law. And to top it off, Nicodemus was one of the leading teachers of Old Testament scriptures. You must never work on the Sabbath. Uh, would you like to hear me recite the other 612 laws? So it seemed like if anybody had a direct path to heaven, it was Nicodemus. But even though he tried his best to follow God's rules, he might have sensed something missing as he watched Jesus teach, as he heard about the amazing thing this young rabbi was doing. The other Pharisees, though, did not approve of Jesus. They say he turned jars of water into wine at some backwards wedding. Ugh, peculiar. Uh, I also heard he makes sick people well, just like that. That's less disturbing than driving all the money changers and sellers out of the temple with a whip. Did you hear about that? Nicodemus didn't know what to think. All of these signs, Jesus couldn't do things like this if he weren't from God, right? Nicodemus was so curious he decided to talk to Jesus himself, but he didn't want the other religious leaders to know what he was doing, so he snuck out in the middle of the night to find Jesus. Rabbi, 
we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. No one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Listen closely to what I say. No one can see the kingdom of heaven unless they are born again. B born again? How can someone be born another time when they're already old? Nicodemus was trying to imagine what on earth Jesus was trying to say. I mean, Nicodemus had already been born once as a Jew. Didn't that mean he would get into heaven? Surely you can't mean someone would have to go back inside their mother. Pay attention. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. <sighs> Nicodemus's mind raced. Jesus was saying that simply being a Jew wasn't enough, that following the rules couldn't get him to heaven. There was a new way. How can this be? You are Israel's teacher. Don't you understand these things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven. He is the Son of Man. Everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Years later, Jesus' friend John helped to make it clear as he wrote down this amazing conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus. God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. Okay, there is so much great stuff in this one short verse. I think we better break it down. Let's start right here with God loved. God made us. He loves us more deeply than we can ever imagine. But just like Adam and Eve in the very beginning, each one of us has broken our relationship with God. Every time we lie or disobey a parent or do something we know is wrong, that's called sin and sin hurts our relationship with God. But God had a plan to make things right. That's why God gave. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. God gave the most incredible gift ever, his own son, Jesus. Jesus lived on earth as a human being, but he lived perfectly. He never sinned, never broke a single one of God's rules. And then he gave up his own life by dying on a cross to rescue us. When Jesus died, he paid the price for our sins, sins that we could never pay for on our own. And because of Jesus, our broken relationship with God is healed. We can be close to him like sons and daughters. Anyone can have that relationship with God, whoever believes. Anybody can believe in Jesus. You, your mom, your dad, your best friend, the new kid at school, the guy who feeds pigeons at the park. Anybody can believe in Jesus because Jesus is a real person. He came to earth about 2000 years ago. People talked with him and followed him. And like Nicodemus, they watched Jesus do amazing things from making blind people see to feeding thousands of people from one tiny little lunch. And people saw him nailed to a cross until he died. But here's the amazing part. Jesus came back to life and hundreds of people saw that too. Jesus is alive right now. He's living with God in heaven. And we can live with God forever too. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. That's the key. You can have a relationship with God, not just now, but for always. When you believe in Jesus and that he died to pay a price for your sins that you could never pay, God gives life forever with him. And just like Nicodemus discovered, you can't earn this forever life by doing all good things or following all the rules. It's a gift from the creator of the universe who loves you no matter what. Now, remember Jesus' friend John who wrote all this down? He adds another thought. God did not send his son into the world to judge the world. He sent his son to save the world through him. Amazing, isn't it? I mean, when you follow Jesus and put your trust in him, you can have confidence in knowing that you're part of this amazing, never-ending story that God is telling. And you'll be able to share that story yourself as you grow in loving God and loving others. Here's what I know. 
There are times in our lives when we lose confidence. Maybe it's because we're afraid we'll mess up. Or maybe we don't think we're good enough or strong enough or smart enough. But here's another thing I know. If you're a good singer, or if you're not, if you can catch a baseball, or if you can't, if you know the answers to all the questions, or if you don't, God loves you. I don't know how you see yourself, but when God sees you, he sees someone he created, someone who is loved, someone who matters. How much does God love you? It's like what John wrote. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but have eternal life. God loved you so much that he gave his son Jesus. And whoever believes in Jesus will have a relationship with God forever. That's where my confidence comes from. No matter what I'm going through, I know that God loves me. And now you know too. That's the one thing to remember today. You can be confident because God loves you. So maybe now I can have the confidence to perform in front of other people. I mean, what's the worst that could happen, right? Roll, roll, roll your boat gently down the street. Yep, God still loves me. And that's pretty cool. I'll see you next time. <laughs> oh, wow, it's dark. Just like when Nicodemus went to see Jesus. Now, I don't know if he used a flashlight or not, but he found some way to find Jesus and ask him about who he was. Now, let's turn the lights on and talk about that a little more. That's much better. Nicodemus came at night to see Jesus, and he was someone who was pretty confident. He was a religious leader. He followed all the rules. He did most things in his life really well. You'd think he wasn't too worried about pressing play on anything. But he came to see Jesus because he had a question and his question was what he must do to have eternal life. And Jesus told him that he needed to be born again. Now, this was a really strange answer because there's really no way to be born again like you're born the first time. But what Jesus meant was you have to stop believing and having confidence only in yourself but you must believe and have confidence in me because I am Jesus, the one who loves you and the one who will save you. And so this is our bottom line for today. We can be confident because God loves us. You know what? Sometimes in life, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to miss basketball shots. We're going to maybe spill our banana or our milk or our entire meal. <laughs> we also might have trouble walking or running and fall down sometimes, but that's okay. We can still be confident in life, not because we're going to do everything perfect, but because no matter what happens, God loves us. And we can have eternal life because we can believe in Jesus. Our confidence comes from him. It reminds me of our memory verse from this week. Let's look at it together. Here is something I am still sure of. I will see the Lord's goodness while I'm still alive. Psalm chapter 27 and verse 13. This is a great verse that says that we can still be sure of something, have confidence in something, but that our confidence comes from God. So why don't we remember that this week? We can remember this man named Nicodemus, who seemed to be very, very confident, but he was confident in himself. And what he needed to do was learn to be confident in God and his amazing love. May you be confident this week in everything that you do with God's amazing love. It doesn't mean you'll be perfect, but it means that God will still love you even when you aren't. That 
is how God sees us. And that is something we can be confident in. Let's close our time together now in prayer. Would you close your eyes and bow your heads and pray with me? God, thank you for loving us so much that you sent Jesus to come and to live and to die and then raise again to new life. So that if we choose to believe in you, we could be born again and have eternal life. And thank you that it's because of you and your great love that we can have confidence, even when we're not perfect, because you will never, never stop loving us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, well, so good to see you, everybody. Have a great week, and we look forward to seeing you back here again next week for Online Church. Take care.